Hello, I'm Dan from ASRV Rentals and Sales, and today we're going to be taking a look at our brand new 2024 Thor Chateau Sprinter Model 24LT. Today, just like always, I'll be giving you the full walkthrough so you'll be all set and prepared when you decide to rent from us. The length of this RV is going to be about 26 feet, and while it does say 12 and a half feet here, uh, especially for our new renters, we should keep this number in line for parking garages and drive throughs uh, and most tunnels should be fine, however. Um, just keep this number in mind, even though it little, is a little bit less than that. Unlike all of our other units, this is actually a diesel unit. So your gas inlet is going to be right over here. So remember, uh, diesel is the key. I'll talk more about that inside. I should also mention that the tank is going to be 24 gallons in size. We're going to go along the driver's side over here, starting with our propane gas. This is our propane tank over here. So a tank of this size will last you about a week or so before you'll have to refill it. If you do truck stations and campsites, they'll do that for you. So all you want to do, you can keep this on actually because your fridge runs on it uh, when you're not plugged in at a campsite. Uh, apart from the fridge, it'll also be for things like your stove, your water heater, and your furnace. So you want to keep it on. Next up here, we have a small storage compartment for a sewer hose. We'll actually give you your own uh, sewer hose in the uh, storage compartment. I'll show you that later on. Next, we have a couple of storage compartments. So this is one of the bigger ones. And we have a thinner, longer one, usually for things like umbrellas and beach chairs. Also in here, this big black cord is actually our power cord. So this RV takes 30 amp service, you can tell because it has the three prongs. So you want to make sure that whatever campsite you're going to has 30 amp connection. You're actually going to plug this power cord into this connection right over here. And once you do that, all the major electrical appliances inside will be working and you won't have to worry about the generator. Those major electrical appliances will be things like your AC unit on the roof, all the outlets behind the cab, your TV, as well as your microwave. Above our power cord connection, we have our TV cable inlet. So we will give you a TV cable. All you want to do is just hook it up in here, hook up the other end at the post at your campsite, and you can find channels that way. If you don't have cable connection, there's also an antenna for this RV so you can find local channels through the air instead. We also have an outside shower. It's just a little faucet outside to wash off dirt or sand before you head inside. We also have a little storage area in the back here as well. This here is the tank flush valve. You won't have to worry about this. It just helps us sanitize uh, the tanks for the next customer. Next up, we have our city water inlet. So this is the city water as opposed to the fresh water inlet, which is on the other side, although they're both going to be using the same hose. The city water will be for when you're at a campsite and you want to take their water from their pump instead of from your own tank. So you're going to hook this up at your campsite to city water connection. Um, and this will bypass your tank and it'll go straight into your pipes. In the back of the driver's side, we have our dumping stations. So this will uh, be where we dump out our black and gray waste tanks. So all I have here is the sewer hose that we'll give you. You're gonna take this end with the teeth and you're gonna clip it onto this outlet right over here. And then from there, you're gonna stick the um, elbow uh, into your sewage or wherever else you're dumping. From there, we have two color-coded valves. So we have our gray valve here. This is for our gray water tank. That's our sink and shower water. And then we have our black valve for our black tank. That's our toilet water. Right now, they're pushed in, which means it's closed. Um, once you hook up your hose, you're gonna open up the black one first and then the gray one to kind of flush it out. You will have gauges inside of the RV that will tell you the levels of each of the tanks. So once they say that your gray and black waste tanks are empty, you can just push these back in to close them, uh, unscrew the hose, and you're all good to go. Onto the back of the RV, the only thing we have to worry about is our rear view camera up here. I'll talk more about that once we get to the front cab. Now onto the passenger side, uh, we have a few more storage areas. Um, this is where we'll put all the hoses and cords that we'll give you. So we've seen this already, this is our sewer hose. Um, but this other bag will have a few other things. First we have the small black wire, this is our TV cable, so you're going to hook that up over on the driver's side. We also have this white hose here. This is our fresh and city water hose. I should do the city water. Um, I'll give you the fresh water walkthrough later on. And then lastly, we have a 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. We can put this onto the end of our power cord. Um, so once you're plugged into 15 amp, this is just like a regular wall outlet. Um, you won't get as much power, so you can't expect the AC unit on the roof to be working off 15 amp. We have our hot water exhaust over here and we also have our hot furnace exhaust over here. So of course, expect them both to be hot and don't put your hand there. We have another tiny storage area in the back here. We have a propane outlet over here. 
So if you have an external grill at your campsite, you can hook it up in here and it will take it off of the propane tank I showed you on the driver's side. Next to that we have our generator. So of course since this is a diesel engine, uh, instead of it running on regular gas, uh, this one is going to run on our diesel tank. So you want to make sure that you're at least a quarter tank full of gas, otherwise um, the generator might not work. The generator is a substitute for when you're not plugged in at your campsite with that power cord. So this is going to be powering the same things as your power cord would, your AC, microwave, TV, and your power outlets. However, you should not run the AC and the microwave at the same time. Sometimes it's a bit too powerful for the generator and it will cause it to trip. In the event you do accidentally trip it, we have a breaker right over here. So this will flip off so you can just uh, turn it back on. This here is the exhaust for the refrigerator. Um, it'll start leaking water, it's just condensation, this is how it works, so there's nothing broken or anything. We have some power outlets over here. Um, these will only work if you're plugged into your campsite or the generator is running. Now we have our freshwater inlet. So that white hose I showed you before, you're gonna use this for both the fresh water and the city water inlets. However, this one will be to fill up the tank itself. So if you're on the road, you're not plugged in at a campsite and you wanna use your sink, shower, toilet, you're gonna take it off of your tank and this will be how you fill it up. And then finally, we have one last storage area on the outside. That concludes the outside of this walkthrough. So we can head inside here. We have an automatic step and you'll also note we have a detachable fly screen door right over here. At the entrance of the RV, we have uh, quite a few switches over here, so I'll go over each of these. Starting off up top here, we have a switch for the entry light right down here. So uh, at nighttime, you'll be able to see where you're going. We have our awning switch, so this will extend and retract the awning. So the awning goes out about eight feet total. Um, it's only for shade, so if it gets windy or rainy, we suggest you bring it back in immediately. The awning is going to run on the house battery, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But um, in case this isn't working, make sure that your engine is off and your parking brake is on. We have our LED strip for the awning right over here, so this is outside. We have our step light here. You won't be able to see it in the daytime, but it'll be right underneath the steps right here. We have our cargo light here, so you want to have this on if you want to turn on and off any of the lights in the outside storage compartments. Our knob here is actually for the house battery, which is underneath these entry steps right over here. The house battery is going to power very minor electrical things, like the lights slide out and awning. It's going to be powered in many different ways, when you're plugged in to shore power at your campsite, when the generator is running, or even when your engine is running. That means you should be able to leave your house battery on for your entire rental unless you're going to be parked outside uh, without turning anything on for several days at a time. To my right here, we have our fire extinguisher for safety purposes. We also have our smoke detector and carbon monoxide and propane detector inside the RV. Next, we have the most important part of the inside of the RV. We have our control panel. This will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about your RV. Start off with the corner over here. These are the levels of your tanks. So as I push down on each of these buttons, uh, these will light up from empty to full. So LPG, that's your propane. I'll push this down. You can see that that goes up to full. We have our battery, how full that's charged, our fresh water tank, our black water tank, and our gray water tank. Over here is our switch for the water pump. So the water pump will help you draw water from your own tank. In other words, if you're plugged into city fixtures at your own campsite, um, you want to have this off since you want to take their water instead of your own. This is going to run on your house battery. And next to that we have our tank heaters. Uh, you want to have these switched on if you are going to a place where it's below freezing. These will help heat up your waste tanks to prevent them from freezing over. Over here we have our big switch for the slide out. It is already extended as you can see. In order to extend the slide out, you want to make sure that your engine is on and your parking brake is on as well. And above that we have our generator. So I'll start off with the meter over here. This will tell you the total number of hours uh, the generator has been running ever since it was manufactured. So right now it says 0.4 hours. To turn on the generator, you're actually going to hold down stop first just for a few seconds. This will help prime the generator. Then you can hold down start, give it a few seconds. And now you hear that the generator is running. You're going to wait about 30 seconds. And when you hear the microwave beep, that means everything inside will be powered. So now with the generator on, I can show you how to find channels on your TV. So once it's on, you're going to press this input button right here. 
You're gonna go over to TV, make sure it's set to your TV. You're gonna press menu over here, head over to channels, and then we're gonna go over to auto channel search, and then you can uh, choose between the antenna, which is what we're gonna use right now, or if you're plugged in at your campsite, you can use cable from the wall. I'll press antenna, and then it'll take about five minutes to find channels for you. Again, with the generator on, I can show you the thermostat as well. So I'm just gonna press this once. Right now you can see it says off. I'm just gonna keep pressing this button to cycle through the different modes. So right now it's gonna be just the fan. I'll press it one more time. You see the snowflake icon, that is your, uh, your AC, so you can control the temperature here. I'll press it one more time, we have our furnace here. This is gonna run on a little bit of your house battery and your propane. And I'll press it one more time and we go back to off. To turn off the generator, all you have to do is hold down stop for a few seconds. In the back here we have our bathroom, so we have a sliding door right here. I'll start off by explaining the water heater over here. It's quite simple, all you want to do is just press this button once, and the display will light up and you can set the temperature for your water here. This is going to be running on your propane, so you want to make sure that you only have this on when you need it. To my right here we have a bunch of storage, uh, drawers, cabinet, and we have some steps over here to head up to the overhead bunk, which I'll show you in a bit. Just like normal we have our sink here, our toilet here is kind of like an airplane toilet. You want to push down on this pedal here with your foot to flush it down. Uh, if You, you want to make sure that you have your water pump on uh, if you're not plugged in at a campsite, and if you are, you can just use the water from the campsite instead. Now the toilet paper for RVs are RV specific, so you want to go to the campsite section at Walmart or campsites will also sell this kind of RV marine dissolvable toilet paper. We'll also give you some bottles of solution uh, for your rental. Uh, this just helps freshen up the toilet uh, in case the smell comes up from the black tank. You can just pour a little bit of that down the toilet to help freshen it up. And lastly we have a completely standard shower. As for the bedroom, we have a sofa here that can collapse and this will come down. This is called a Murphy bed. So this is a convertible sofa slash bed. First, you can remove these cushions. They're just Velcro here. And with the sofa out of the way, we can just remove these ties over here on both sides. And lastly, we can bring this bed down. Uh, we have our support here. This will spring out. And then we can gently bring this down. And lastly, this is our bed. Note that we also have privacy curtains going all the way around. This dinette area has two seat belts on either side, and we also have a charging area in the middle of the table here. Next up we have our dinette area. Uh, just like the sofa, this can turn into a bed, and I'll show you that right now. First of all, all you want to do is just remove the bottom parts here. It's just felt good. Next we have a latch down here. When it's flipped to the right, it's locked, so we're going to flip it to the left to unlock it. This lets us push down the table onto these ledges here. And lastly, we can put the cushions in this floor mat, and here is our bed. Also note that we have an anchor for a child seat in the dinette here. To use the windows, you want to flip this up to unlock it. And then these blinds are just flipped down once and then tug on it a second time to bring it back up. Onto the passenger side here, we have some more storage. Uh, we have a pole here to hang clothes. And then we also have some drawers down here and a fuse box and circuit breaker box down here. We have our fridge here. So the fridge is going to run on propane when you're not plugged in. Uh, but when you do plug in at your campsite, it will automatically switch over to electricity. So no matter what, your fridge is going to stay on and your food will be kept cool the whole time. Onto the rest of the kitchen area, we have our stove here. This is going to run on propane. So we have three burners and three knobs for each of them. We can just set each of these to the fire option to, you can hear the uh, propane come out. And then we can spark it like this. And there we go. Once you're done, you're going to wait a few minutes before you put the top back on, otherwise the glass might shatter. At night, we also have LED lights for the knobs. Below that, we have our microwave, just a standard house microwave here with a turntable. Again, you want to make sure that when you're on your generator, you do not want to want, uh, run the AC and the microwave at the same time. We have a standard kitchen sink here with a cover just for some extra counter space. 
And we have our charging station over here. You just push down on it once, and you can bring it up like that. We have some wall outlets, USB, USB-C, and then you can just press this red button here to release it, and it will go back in. The skylight up here has a exhaust fan. You can just press this button here, it's automatic. That turns it on, and then this knob will open and close the cover itself. We have our overhead bunk over here, so all you want to do is just bring this out like so. And once it's out, we have a little safety net here. We also have a privacy curtain across the front here, and this privacy curtain will be velcroed on to the entire front across here. For even more table space, we have this right here to bring it up, and then to bring it down, we're just going to push on these two on either side, just like that. During your rental, we'll also give you this envelope, which has a few different things. We have a QR code that you can scan for an online guide slash FAQ. This should answer most of your questions. We also have our registration here. Um, we also have some extra fuses for the fuse box, just in case anything happens. And then we also have a 24-7 roadside assistance number by CoachNet. You can call this uh, and then provide them with your reservation number that we'll give you so they can best assist you with pretty much any question you have about your RV. And here we are in the front cab. I'll just show you the keys first. This is of course for the engine. We have our contact information on this little part, our address, phone number. Uh, you can call this uh, number about any questions about your reservation itself. We have uh, some extra keys. So this one here is gonna be for your cabin door. We have our storage compartments. And then we also have this key is for the outside uh, shower. To turn on the vehicles, just like a regular truck, you wanna hold down, uh, push down the brake here. This is keyless, so you're just gonna press uh, start right here. What's important about this is because it's diesel, you wanna make sure that you let it sit for up to five minutes uh, before you drive it, especially if you're in a place uh, where it's very cold. The front center console is just like a regular car or truck. You can connect your phone with Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff. Um, but above here, in place of a rear view mirror, we have a rear view camera. So this will stay on when you're driving. The parking brake is by my right hand here. So to engage it, you just pull it up like that. And to release it, make sure you push this button and you can bring it back down. And that'll be it for our 2024 Thor Chateau Sprinter Model 24LT. I'm Dan from ACV Rentals and Sales and have a great trip.